Oh, I told you before I should never go on Craigslist. <laughs> anyway, I found this thing yesterday and had to have it. Oh my goodness. Um, I need to, I need to look up the price of these things when they were new. I think they were outrageous. They were well over a thousand dollars. I'm sure. Um, this is a 6286A DC power supply and it's uh, 0 to 20 volts, 0 to 10 amps, uh, all linear. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, paid 40 bucks for it. So uh, that is a very good deal. I don't know if it works or not. Um, it's missing uh, some knobs in the front, which is not a good sign. Usually when things go bad, people start stripping parts off of them. So these parts, these, these knobs are missing. Now these have a, a coarse and a fine adjust on them, which is really nice. Um, both of these have coarse and fine. So there, there was a, there's one knob here, but there was a knob that went on the outside. So I look through my junk bin. I always save knobs. You know, people who sew save buttons. I save knobs. Um, so I have this knob here, which is, a, which is a perfect match for this one, except it's not the uh, two layer one. It only, it's only a single layer, but I'm sure I can just go onto the lathe or, or mill or something and remove, uh, remove the top of it. And then I can turn, I can turn this one into one of those. And then I looked around for some small knobs that go on top. Now in the way back days, HP always had a red knob on top. They had a, a black knob on the bottom and a red knob on top. Now I know the vintage of this uh, instrument here had black knobs on black knobs, but, um, but I do have matching HP red knob, black knob. So that's what I'm going to put on here. Unfortunately, these are uh, 1 8 inch and this looks like something like 3 16 inch or something like that. So, um, so I will need, there's, there seems to be enough meat on these that I can, uh, I can drill that out and make these work. So anyway, that's my plan. I've got, so I've got two red ones. I've got two red ones and a black one, so I should be able to fix up the front panel. Um, so, uh, what do they say? Uh, don't turn it on, take it apart. So let's take it apart. I think you'll be impressed with the insides of this thing. Did I mention it was heavy? Oh, there's a screw missing too. That's never a good sign. Means that somebody's been into it. Oh man. Well, we will see. Uh, I'm sure I can find replacement screws here. Oh, this one has dirt in it. What's to go wrong? It's a power supply, right? I've done lots of videos now on power supply, so <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to fix my own power supply. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that capacitor. That is the biggest capacitor I have ever seen. Uh, let me measure it. Let me measure that capacitor. Um, <laughs> let's see here. He is, oh man, I can get to the bottom of it. He is 75 millimeters by uh, 130 millimeters or in inches. That's five inches by five inches by three inches. <laughs> wow. Uh, what is he? He is a 34 millifin millihenries. Yeah. 34, thousand microfarads. Did I say Henry's? 34,000 microfarads. Yeah, 34 millifarads. When they get that big, you start using milli. Uh, good to 30 volts. <laughs> oh man, that is a monster. Could you imagine just having to buy that and replacing it? That's probably a hundred dollar capacitor right there. Oh man, maybe more. I don't know. I haven't bought, I haven't bought big capacitors. They must be really expensive, but there's, there's the money. There's the, uh, uh, big transformer. So that's all that's in here really, right? <laughs> Dude, giant transformer, giant capacitor. What else do you need? You need a few other things. Um, nice big, uh, diodes here for the rectification. Oh, look at this. <laughs> and why not have two transformers? So this transformer probably supplies all of the, uh, uh rails and stuff for the op amps and, uh, of course, there's, there's all, this is all discreet. There's no ICs in this thing. That's all discreet. Uh, but yeah, so this is a power supply inside the power supply just to do all the rails. Now, a lot of times they'll do that. Uh, I think even the little, I think I did a video on a hundred volt little power supply. And uh, a lot of times they'll put extra windings on the big one. They'll have two sets of windings, one set of windings for the actual power supply and the one set of windings that creates all the voltages that you need inside of the power supply to make it work. 
Um, so yeah, let's look at the bottom. Let's look at the bottom of this thing. Well, and the back. Let's see. Should we look at the back? Oh God. Oh. Well, I'm gonna look at the bottom because that's easier to flip over right now. Did I mention this thing's heavy? All right. So this should be very familiar. I did a video on a, on a power, oh, this is all buggered up. I did a video on a power supply that somebody gave me and uh, I modified it into something usable. I'll replace that screw. The head's all messed up on it. So people have been in this thing too many times. So I'm assuming that something is, something is dead on it. Hopefully I'm more clever than they were and fix, I'll fix it. All right. Yeah, see? Look at all the goodness. That might need replacing. I've not had good luck with those yellow ones. Um, and these guys here sometimes are good and sometimes are bad, these type here. Um, somebody, was, oops, somebody was commenting on one of my videos that, uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. If, if the capacitors are working, don't fix them. Um, and a lot of these are probably fine, and I don't feel like recapping this entire thing, but I will probably look to see what's probably broken and just fix those. Um, so it looks very familiar. It has the big, uh, the big shunt resistor here to measure current. It is a 16 ohm, wow, 16 ohms. Uh, it got very hot. The PC board is kind of darkened around it. Uh, but everything else looks clean. I don't see any, I don't see any hacks. I don't see any, any solder or anything. It looks like somebody's been trying to repair it. So um, maybe it works. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Let's see, is there a date code on this? 1982. 1982. I started working in 1980, graduated in 79, so... Uh, yeah, so I'll just leave these covers off because I'm sure I will not be putting them back on for a while. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's take a look at the back, make sure it's strapped right. Um, a lot of times these things come out of uh, racks and stuff and they have remote sensing. And so you're able to bring the sense leads on separate wires out to the device and to take into account any uh, cable losses and stuff. It's kind of like a Kelvin contact. And um, uh, we need to make sure it's strapped right for our use, which is normal. Okay, so let me flip this thing around. Oh, God. And let me lower the camera back down again so we can see inside. Okay, so let's look under the hood here. And see how it is strapped. Okay. Uh, well, get this out. All right. Uh, hmm. Well, let's see here. It's supposed to be, so here's the, uh, here's the diagram. Uh, let me get a flashlight because I can't see very good here. Uh, we're supposed to have a jumper here to here, and here to here, all the way up to G. Here to here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, shoot, four. This needs to have a jumper on it as well. See? That's why you check these things. There's, there should be a jumper from here to here. Ah, there's the insignias up there. I didn't see them. You probably saw them in the camera before I did. So, uh, plus S, A2, plus plus and G should all be shorted together. And this one is not. These are, this one is not. And then we have a uh, minus, minus, minus these guys here should be shorted together, minus, 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 and they are 
and then uh, these three should be shorted together, and then these three. So what's that G for? That might not actually be necessary. It might just be ground. That might just be earth ground, and they have it connected to the plus side. That's kind of weird, but maybe you need to do that. Okay, let's turn this thing on. Uh, see if it works. So I'll bring over a, a voltmeter here too, just to double check things. And is that in camera? No, it's not in camera. There we go. Let's turn it on. Well, we get some voltage out. Let's measure it. Minus plus. And we're getting 10 volts out. Uh, well, that's not right. It's not what the meter's reading. 10 volts. Let me adjust the. Uh, let me adjust this. Oh, that works. Uh, let me. Uh, let me get some banana jacks here so we have a solid connection here without me having to hold it. And, oh, it's 0.16 volts. Well, that's not good. Oh, wait a minute, I had it turned down all the way. Oh, that is good. Well, seven volts, 12 volts, 18 volts, turned up all the way, 25 volts. That seems to be in spec, so it looks like that's working. But the meter's not working right. Well, that's an easy thing to fix, probably. That is much easier than fixing power supplies. So, yeah. And let's see if the fine adjust works. Yeah, the fine adjust works, too. So I can dial that right into... Yeah, that'll be good. So I can get here almost to 10. I can back it down. Very nice. There we go. It does have some lag in it. It's got that such a big monster capacitor back there without a load on it. It takes a while for it to settle. But uh, yeah, that looks to be doing voltage okay. Now, I don't know about current. Um, it's interesting, though, that the meter has uh, different ranges so that I can measure uh, current and voltage by clicking it. You know, this is current, and it's measuring huh, It's measuring nine, nine amps of current or uh, five amps of current, and that can't, can't be right. Uh, so the meter, meter, the meter section is all messed up. Um, and so it has a 24, 24, oh, see if I, yeah, there's something, something goofy, something goofy with a meter. Okay, anyway, uh, oh, maybe it's a switch. Ah, maybe the switch is dirty. Ah, now it's measuring zero. And now maybe the 10 volts will measure 10. No, the voltage is still off. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a switch. Maybe it's just a switch. Anyhow, what I was going to say was it's got a 24 volt full scale and a 12 amp full scale, uh, but it also has a 2.4 volt full scale, which seems pretty crazy. So let's, let's crank it down. Let's go to the 2.4 volt scale. Oh, maybe that one's working. Uh, so it says that, that should be 1.2 volts right there, and it says 1.6 over here. So I don't know. Uh, but the it seems strange that you have a 10 amp power supply with a two and a half volt range. <laughs> um, anyway, it also has a 1.2 amp range, so. Uh, they just, they did, I guess the, since they have the switch and they just do a 10x, they just did a 10x and uh, not have to change the scales. So the, actually the 1.2 amp would be very handy. handy. I like that one. So there's a 12 amp and a 1.2 amp. And the 1.2 amp is pegged. So yeah, there's something wrong with the meter circuit. Uh, so I'm hoping the power supply is good. hope the power supply is good. It does make buzzy noises like old, old analog supplies. When I change the voltage, it goes. Do you hear that? Let me show up my microphone over there. Okay, see if, you can, see if you can hear this. Oops. I'll let that car go by. Hear that when I go up? <laughs> now, I don't know if that's normal. <laughs> uh, or maybe the capacitor is really bad on it, 
and it's just loading things down, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, I think we'll have to uh, test this thing and, uh, and see if it uh, is outputting current or not. Have, put, put a DC load on it and see if it's operating that way okay. Uh, I just want to do a quick test to make sure the power supply is healthy and then I'll go try to figure out what, what's wrong with the meter. Um, can you see that? Maybe you can put some, uh, put a shadow on it. There we go, that's a better shadow. I'll just, just balance that there, okay. I think you can read that better. So um, I'm using my little, uh, my dummy, dummy load here, uh, just because it's quick and easy. So uh, it's uh, set for um, a, a 10 volt limit. So the, the voltage needs to be above 10 volts, otherwise it'll complain. And it's set for a two amp load. And I've set the supply to 12 volts and it's reading 12 volts right now. So the, the meter is a bit flaky, so I'm not quite sure what's up with it yet, but. I'll turn this on. So we're, we're now we're uh, uh, sourcing two amps and it, the voltage stayed up. If I move it to the amp one, it's measuring amps correctly. So if I measure, if I increase the uh, amps over here, the amps increase over, over here. And I think this will go up to about five amps before it cuts out, something like that. We'll just do four amps. That's a healthy, healthy place. We're 11.7, uh, probably drops in the cables. We can make up for that by adjusting the knob over here. So now we have 12 volts again. So there we go, 12 volts. Um, and we're measuring four amps here about. And if we go over to volts, yeah, we're still measuring 12 volts. So it's, it, it, um, what I've noticed is that sometimes the meter will like slowly come up, which makes me think there's a bad capacitor somewhere in here. It'll, it'll like be down here and suddenly it'll just go very slowly ramp up like the capacitor is trying to heal itself. That's, that's probably a sign. But anyway, I think it's just the measurement uh, circuit, not the, uh, not the drive circuit, because it seems to be working fine. We can take the uh, voltage up. You see the, oh, that's current. Let's see here, go back to voltage. Yeah, the voltage is going up. We can go to 16 volts. Yeah, I got 16 volts over there. And the, this thing is limited in the amount of uh, wattage that it can take, so it, it started to go back. And if we go below nine volts, it, it starts to complain. So that thing's working good. Uh, let's go back up to, let's go back up to four amps. All right. And, uh, let's see, let's turn this on. Yeah, six, six, five, four volts at four amps, three and a half volts at four amps. Yeah, this thing's working good. So I say the power supply itself is working great. 